Thank you. Got the green lights on. <clears throat> like call the meeting to order. Regular board meeting for February twenty first, twenty twenty four. Roll call, please. Mr. Ferrari. Here. Mrs. Taliani. Here. Mr. Merba. Here. Dr. Lynch. Here. Mrs. Alcorn. Mr. Pasetto. Here. Mr. Sarver. Here. Please rise for pledge of allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone tonight. Big agenda, most of you will miss it. <laughs> which is a good thing. Well, they can stay if they want to. Well, you can stay if you yeah. like. Yeah. But, uh, but, you know, you haven't had a root canal in a while. I mean, that'd be about the same thing. Okay, I need a motion to approve the minutes for January 24th, 2024, regular meeting. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Murba? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Pasetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. Uh, next on the agenda is our recognitions. And to be very honest with you, this is one of the highlights of the board meeting month to month. Um, it, it's, it's great to see and acknowledge the accomplishments of our students, faculty, and staff. And this month we are, we are blessed to have our music department who did such a great job uh, at the 2024 IM, I, I-L-M-I-E. They just put an L in there lately? I'm serious, did they just put an L in there lately? Yes, the L is somewhat new. Okay, because I always thought it without the L. Yeah, it was. Okay, see? <laughs> you guys picking on me. <laughs> <laughs> but our band program, headed by uh, Mr. Jeremy Stevens, and our vocal program, headed by um, Mrs. Nad Natalie Baruki. I'm having a rough time tonight. <laughs> <laughs> He's leaving for vacation in the morning. Isn't <laughs> there you go. Okay. But we, we have nine students that did an outstanding job. And when I announce you, please come forward, meet the board, and we have a certificate for you. All right. Uh, from the band, Allstate Orchestra, Alton Beck, trombone. Congratulations. Good work. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Hold on. Congratulations. Honors Band, Gabrielle Mosley, flute. Congratulations. It's not a big day for you. Congratulations. Well done. Congratulations. Oh, um, she was uh, one of the Renaissance Student of the Month. Uh, uh, honorees yeah. this morning. Nice. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our director of bands, Mr. Jeremy Stevens. State Chorus, Sydney Ganscott. State Chorus, James Hohen.
Honors Chorus, Nora Meyer. Honors Chorus, Elizabeth Kamke. Honors Chorus, Emily Commits. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice job, Emily. Well done. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Honors Chorus, Adrian Silva. And director of our choral program, Mrs. Natalie Baruki. Amongst the best musicians in the state of Illinois. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> well, that cleared the place out. <laughs> All right, tonight for our Division Spotlight, we have our Science Department. I'm looking forward to this yeah. right, now, right now. The energy in your department is ecstatic to me. I mean, it's awesome. So I, I love to listen to people. <laughs> Can you see the, uh, am I on the way? No, okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting us come in and uh, talk about what we're doing in our classes. We're all going to take turns and go through some uh, pictures and, sh and just talk about what we've been doing. The criminal in the middle is me if you haven't seen me. <laughs> 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 
And this is our new teacher spotlight. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yay. <laughs> um, well, I'm not new to teaching. I'm um, just new to LP this year. I um, taught for 16 years at Grand Ridge, taught middle school science. So um, I have been teaching a long time, but it's been amazing coming to LP and absolutely love it here. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to teach here. And we love her. And yes. we love her. <laughs> <laughs> Chemistry. All right, so chemistry, I'll speak upon for uh, Michelle Fittler. Michelle is consistently adding new fun hands-on things for her students to work with. She does honors chemistry, and she has a really fun time every year making the chemistry ornament. The students <laughs> have to come up with a fun way to express themselves through a an element on a periodic ta mm -hmm. table. And I've seen this tree, and it's always very unique, very interesting. Mm -hmm. It's fun to see how the students can consistently come up with new things, even in a world where we think we've seen it all. Um, research is one thing, but creativity is a totally different thing, mm -hmm. and we love to see it. Michelle is also doing some cool pioneering things, uh, as like getting students involved, trying to be more social, and interact with each other with She's come up, I hope she doesn't get mad at me for saying this, but she's come up with a really fun speed dating element game that we played as a division, uh, as a chemistry, <laughs> and it was just knocking my socks off. So uh, I know that Michelle couldn't be here tonight, but she is always secretly so funny and is engaging the students in a way that uh, they can definitely meet <coughs> and in a way that she can meet them as well. So. I'm also speaking about Mr. Burkhardt. <laughs> so I love this demonstration. The greatest thing that I think about uh, Dan, Mr. Burkhardt, is that <coughs> consistently the students see him as a positive role model um, socially. He is always wanting to engage the kids, keep them involved. He's told me consistently, he's also an assistant track coach with me, um, that he will do anything for the kids. Mm -hmm. And that is just true. That really is mm -hmm. just true. Mm -hmm. So he likes to do hands-on demonstrations. He's taken the time to do some Mr. Yoder's old demonstrations, <laughs> which all of us are like, woo -hoo -hoo, I don't know if we can do that. But he puts in the effort to learn new things, to be um, very honest about what he uh, likes to do with the students and like keeping them in hands on, and also where he is uh, trying to do new things with them. So we consistently get to talk about, well, maybe this would be fun. Maybe the students would like to do this. So he's always meeting the students where they are. It's so helpful. The kids see him as a figure that they can trust and lean on. So. <coughs> and yes, his planet project. So obviously you can see that they are putting on a presentation which works with their soft skills of speaking in front of others and being able to meet each other as well, talk about their favorite things. Like I said, what I love about Dan is that he's always willing to meet those kids. Yep. This is the one. Yeah. <laughs> this is the one. So we've got six molar hydrochloric acid in here. And it is incredible that he put this together, because Mr. Yoder used to do this, and Mr. Yoder, I'm sure you all remember, was an excellent chemist, mm -hmm. uh, truly one of the last, to me, great chemists, uh, a t chemistry teacher that I've never even experienced, someone like him. So Mr. Burkhart taking on those things, maybe going a little bit outside of his comfort zone, outside of my comfort zone, <laughs> even, <laughs> to put this together so that the kids can see things that they can remember and attach to. So, so did it explode? It did, it really went. <laughs> <laughs> it sent, that's for sure. Okay, so this is from this year. I had the absolute best time. There's Alton Beck right there, if you just <laughs> saw him. <laughs> um, one thing, Alton, yes, it, those creative kids, when you get them into a creative set, they will, take the time to think themselves, which is amazing and excellent. So I asked Mr. Baker to come in because out of many labs that we do, I thought that this one was so engaging for the kids. They brought in crazy stuff. They mm. had to find trash that they could use. They, do, they weren't really supposed to be buying things. Mm. And so they brought in things that they had to make from scratch. And we know that we can teach them how to do calculations. We know that we can teach them how to memorize facts, but can we teach them to bridge the gap? I don't even see these as soft skills anymore, nor hard skills, I see them as more rationalizing skills. So the idea is, can you estimate your ability? Do you understand your ability enough to estimate what you can do in a certain time frame? Are you <coughs> able to work with someone else when there is a problem? So we're, I'm focusing on project-based learning at this time because it keeps the kids actively engaged. This was a time where 
I didn't have to police anybody about anything. It was like being at summer camp. And we got to see, this was how we understand the radius of a loop in relation to its height and potential of uh, gravitational potential. And the truth is here is that they worked really, really hard and they didn't actually need to. So by the end, they had figured out, I approached this in a way that I thought was impossible. But by the end of it, they were like, oh, that's it? That's all you have to do? And the answer is yes, truly. Go out and try it, see what works, and then you can apply these mathematics. I had them derive that, uh, come up with it by research. So now that they've derived that, that equation holds. So I showed them you can do a vertical loop with a skateboard. So I did not tell them to do that, <laughs> but I said you can do that. Just look at your radius and make sure that it's within these limits. So I, I got to show them that, and they do enjoy that. I do think that sometimes students feel like this is so out of their reach, especially when um, what's in the news is not classical mechanics, it's about quantum. And quantum is such a different animal, but I think that's actually very good, because now that we're focusing on quantum mechanics, we can see that molecular mechanics are very similar. They are the same as classical mechanics, and I think it opens up a sense of study that maybe we haven't had access to before. Because we've finally kind of gone, we're standing on the shoulders of giants so far now, but I'm hoping that we can continue to see even, shut up, <laughs> even beyond that. Um, so I loved this project, I had a great time. Uh, we always do the airplane velocity. They love that, they like to create. As you can tell, I worked with a lot of hands-on things. But as I was saying, it's not just can you make something here, it's can you derive the information backwards now. Can you see an example, derive the inf information, and relate that to the equation. Because truly, we can derive all of these equations ourselves. We don't have to look at the textbook. We do, but we don't have to. We can use nature to teach us what we need to learn. And I think that they love that aspect of it, where we can just look out into the world and see, hey, you don't have to find this on TikTok. You don't have to rely on an expert on Facebook. Go out <coughs> and do it. See what happens. Uh, obviously, safely, these are very low risk activities. <laughs> Um, we do free body diagrams. That is probably the thing that I am hammering the hardest is perspective. So understanding that there are different perspectives in physics, we have to make sure that we are all aligning in the same way, which serves as a double function because once you realize that there is a north, south, east, west is much more directed than over there, <laughs> then <laughs> we can actually speak more uh, with more continuity as a class. And we can talk about, well, my reference point in this situation is and then that builds on further learning because you can apply that in different areas. No, I didn't understand a word of that. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, just kidding. Um, I, can I do one thing real oh, quick yeah. about I AP? I thought you had another picture. I know, so. I meant to put this one, I dropped the ball on that. But um, I do teach AP chemistry right now and I did want to speak upon that because as a city, we are reliant and um, historically a chemistry city. Mm -hmm. If we look at Harris Chemical, mm -hmm. the goal here, um, what I'm doing with AP chemistry, it is a fast moving class. This is my first year teaching it. I'm loving it. It's super, um, we get to do a lot of learning together, which is great. And also what I like to put into AP chemistry is GHS symbols, our globally harmonized system, OSHA certification type skill, where yes, I want them to know how chemistry works. Like we were talking about classical mechanics. It's very similar. So <coughs> students that take physics then can apply their classical mechanics to chemistry. Um, but also, that we need safe practice. We need to understand disposal. Our, mm -hmm. our systems in the city, uh, they require us as citizens to understand how do we dispose safely? How do we take responsibility for what we're doing? So it's more than just we're tinkering around the lab. It's mm. we're putting this away properly. We're making sure that this goes into a waste container and not down the drain if it is not okay to go down the drain. So putting in SDS manuals, SOPs, mm -hmm. things that go with um, practice and industry, we deserve to provide our city with good chemists because we are a city of chemistry. And I know that that's maybe here or there with people, but it is just true. If you look around, this is who we are. So I'm hoping that I can inspire more students to uh, take that difficult material and make it into something that you see, that you can perceive because we can test and we can find the same results as all of the other scientists. They had less, less research opportunity. We have more. Mm -hmm. We can look things up, but it's best if we see them first. So thank you for your time. Very for good. Your time. Very good. Thanks. Yeah. It's your turn. Yeah, your turn. <laughs> um, so I have the privilege of teaching two honors biology classes, and I have three team talk <coughs> classes for regular bio. 
Um, we've done a ton of um, just different types of projects this year. Um, Mrs. Cautious, Mrs. Deborah Brock and I um, have been working together um, just to make sure that we're all covering the same material um, for iron <coughs> biology. Um, we've pretty much done you know, most of the same lab activities, same projects. Um, some of my favorite ones that we've done this year. Um, we did the human impact project, okay? Mm -hmm. So the kids all had to pick a human impact that was affecting, um, you know, just um, different ecosystems. And then they had to um, break it down and see what, you know, what were the root causes of it. Um, so that was really nice, or, you know, really fun to see what some of the kids came up with. And the um, spin off of that is the uh, survivor project we mm -hmm. did with them you know, like the Survivor TV show, they were supposed to come up with a survivor in an ecosystem and all the requirements that are required for you to survive on that for a week. Mm -hmm. And so they were supposed to appeal to producers to set, show them that this is the show we want you to uh, produce on TV. Mm -hmm. And that was really cool, some of the stuff they came up with. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah that was a fun <coughs> one. Um, our most recent unit, we're doing photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Um, so we've been doing some station activities. Um, <coughs> today we just did, um, they were making root beer with fermentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was, that's kind of a lot of fun. And, you know, they're super excited because they're going to get root beer floats. Um, but we were able to, you know, let the kids see um, using the bromothymol blue, um, how when you breathe in carbon dioxide to that, it turns into sulfonic acid and it changes the blue to green. And mm -hmm. then, you know, one little drop of sodium hydroxide turns it back to blue. So. They were, um, they thought that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, anyone else think of anything else? Can we, just uh, we just, yeah, we get together, the three of us, and we come up with yeah. these ideas, Weekly. and we see a lot of things on the internet, and we change them and modify them to what we want, like the <coughs> Survivor Project. That was really uh, something that we modified from somebody's uh, mm -hmm. project. But yeah, we do uh, quite a bit of hands-on activities with the kids. Which they keep feeling mm -hmm. genetic stuff, they're gonna love it. Mm -hmm. Mine too. <laughs> Okay. We can do it together. Okay. Okay. So team plot bio, um, we pretty much cover the same curriculum as honors, mm -hmm. um, just maybe not quite as in depth. Um, so our most recent was Barfags <laughs> with fermentation. Um, yeah, it was pretty smelly in the room. It was, yeah. Um, but the kids took cereal, so we were comparing three different types of cereal, obviously one that has high sugar content, one that had no artificial sugars in it. Um, and then they put the yeast in with the little bit of water, mashed it all up, and then which cereal produces the most carbon dioxide it makes the bags get really big. <laughs> so luckily we didn't have any pop. Um, but that was a fun one that we just did. Yeah. So there's another one. Uh, we do the Taste the Rainbow, which is also photosynthesis, so the respiration. But I became Sheldon Cooper, and I counted <laughs> carbon <laughs> atoms. I counted 95 <laughs> Ziploc bags of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen atoms over Christmas break. And uh, so this, the students sort them out. They have to figure out how many is supposed to be carbon, how many is supposed to be hydrogen, how many is supposed to be oxygen, based on what we've learned in class, plus what the information is. And it gives them the, the formulas, um, mm -hmm. the chemical reactions. And uh, then the best part they like is that they get to eat them when they're done. Because <laughs> everybody gets their own. Um, so they really enjoyed that. But again, it's a visual. Mm -hmm. And if they don't remember. Yeah. Like they're modeling and they get to see the law of conservation of matter where what you start with, you end right, with. Right. It's yeah. just everything that's switches around. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. That's a fun one. It was fun. Mm -hmm. We wrote a grant, Mrs. Cotchis and I, uh, last spring, and we were fortunate enough to be given a very generous, generous uh, gift of 30 classroom microscopes, compound microscopes, as well as 10 stereoscopes. The stereoscopes that we have were not electric. We had to use a mirror and shine the light mm -hmm. to the mirror to get to, to see the image. Now we can plug them in. And the other thing is, with these really nice ones is that they're battery operated. So uh -huh. Michelle and I don't have a lab room, so we can still take the microscope into our rooms and not have to have extension cords running all over the place mm -hmm. um, because we don't have enough outlets. So it was a very, very generous um, grant and we have used them in many classes. Mm -hmm. looking at various things over the last couple of months. Yeah, we've all shared those. I will say they are amazing. They are very amazing. And they amazing. also bought two carts too. To oh yeah, a cart too. for yeah. us too, yeah. 
Okay, I'm supposed to tell you, um, Angelique, type something up for me. So um, she's on the, um, in AP biology, she's on the mini posters on the genetic crosses. So they're doing the Drosophila crosses right now. Uh, and they're looking at the parents, the F1, the F2 generations. Uh, they're presenting their data using Punnett squares and chi-square analysis. Uh, they've also worked with simulated blood, uh, genetic corn, a slime mold for crossing over uh, data for genetic variation. And they'll be finishing this unit five this week and moving on to unit six, which is gene expression and regulation. And that's working with bacterial cultures and gel electrophoresis. And then they're going to be working toward their goal of passing the AP exam in May. So that's some um, AP, the Wisconsin Fast Plants. She always does that too. We wrote a grant to the foundation one year. We got a couple of those growing chambers and we use them all the time. And then um, she has some microscope work that they were looking at also um, with um, looking at cells and cell structures. And then her anatomy, um, they just finished isolating over 30 muscles in a preserved cat, and then they took a lab practical over muscular system, which included human and cat muscles. They are learning about the nervous system, and they will be using a preserved sheep brain to identify some of the protect protections and structures of the brain. Uh, after next week, students will move on to the sense organs, and they'll learn about the structures of the eye and the skin and the ear. So, um, and there's a cat. Show it open, I'll be honest. I put that on there. I found that on the internet. They don't come with hair. I know they don't. They used no, to. They're all shaved. When I was student teach, well, when I did my uh, clinical care, they were, yeah, they had. They were street cats that you found? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and my forensic science, um, I have a couple of new labs that we introduced this year. Uh, the kids did, um, some facial reconstruction. We had a facial reconstructionist come in, and um, Carol uh, was nice enough to order these skulls for me. There's like eight of them, so each class could only do so much on the skull, and then they had to uh, work on that with the next class. Um, and then this year, what we added was, um, you can see that first picture there, I had the teachers vote on which skull was the best. Mm -hmm. So they had fun doing that. Um, we still do the crime scene projects. Here's some new ones for this year. The kids get gruesomer, more gruesome, and more gruesome every year. Um, I've added, as you know, I have a lot of guest speakers. So this year, I had some new ones come in, which are really cool. Uh, the gentleman on your left or my right, yeah. yes, that one. Um, he is from ISU. Dr. Brewer, Chris Brewer, is a, um, he works in the criminology department at ISU, and he also works in cybersecurity. So he did some cybersecurity talk with the kids um, and some demonstrations, which was really cool. Matt was there. Um, and he definitely wants to come back. So we're going to try to work it another day. He wants to talk about the dark web. Mm -hmm. And the kids are looking in forward to that. Um, I have Dr. Uh, Santos there again because I want you to see how the kids interact with these people. Um, they ask them questions, they go up afterwards. When the bell rings, they ask them questions. How do I get into this career? They'll have demonstrations for the kids, so that's really nice. Um, the guy um, in the third one is, um, <coughs> I introduced a, dr a drug recognition officer this year. And I talk about that every year in my drug unit, a drug recognition expert. And so he came in and told the kids um, about his job and what he does, and then I, got on the internet this summer and I was looking, I want a cadaver dog. Mm -hmm. And so these two people, uh, their husband and wife team, I found them and they came in with their cadaver dogs and showed the kids how to, how to, um, how the dogs work with cadavers. And we have, I have a bin of that skeleton that was donated to me, a real skeleton. And they were able to detect the bones through the plastic. Oh, wow. and so that was really cool. The kids got to see them in action. Um, one of the new things this year, I usually took the kids on a field trip to Eureka. Dr. Lally was a professor over there for many years, and ISU stole him. And he said, the only way I'll come here is if you get me a building. And so they wrote a grant, and there's going to be a new forensic science research and training facility that's, that's being built. Um, his lab part is done, and we're going to go down in March, and we're going to go uh, through a tour. Um, the second part of his, his uh, facility is going to be every 
room is going to be a different crime scene. Mm -hmm. And so he, his goal is to train police officers throughout the uh, state of Illinois and also his students um, at ISU. And then the third part is not going to be done until a couple of years. So I'm hoping we see the second part next year. But the third part is an outdoor crime scene for crime scene reconstruction, Ooh. those kind of things. Yeah, the physics. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I'm looking forward to giving out my grant again. We have some really good applicants this year, and it's going to be really hard to pick one this year. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've, uh, I've been asked again this last year to speak to the um, International Association for Identification, and um, I'm waiting to hear if they're going to accept me again uh, for this coming school year uh, to go down and speak to them. It'll be in Reno, Nevada this year. Um, last year it was in Oklahoma. Yeah, we didn't see much. Um, <laughs> and then Mrs. Navarro. Uh, so just a few things um, with SportsMed uh, this fall. I was fortunate enough that Lynn Pohar called me and said, "Hey, we found some Actar mannequins in a storeroom, shoved in a corner." Mm -hmm. And so she gave them to me. So now we have a whole set of Actar <coughs> mannequins with that are infant as well as adult. So we didn't have to worry about trying to plan it with the ACC Center because they have the mannequins as well. So now I can use the Actar and we were able to schedule it on our own time, which is super nice, and we can store them in our storeroom, so we have access to that. So that was huge, um, getting those from Lynn. And so every student in SportsMed in the fall uh, learned how to do CPR, AED, and first aid. Uh, so the first aid stuff was using things that you have at home. Now, if you're like me, I have splints at home, but that's because that's what I do. But you have a magazine, that you can roll up. You probably have a newspaper that you can roll up. You have a bed, you probably have a sheet or a blanket or a pillow that you can use for a splint. So those are the kind of splinting that I did with the students mm -hmm. because they can do that at home. Mm -hmm. And I, a couple of them said they had to do something similar to that. They had an accident and they actually splinted it and then took their, whoever it was, nice. to the, to the cool. ER. So oh. yeah, it was kind of nice that they were applying it. Mm -hmm. um, the first semester also they have to do a 12 part uh, research project and I put some samples out here you can take a look at those later but they have to design their own facility starting from the ground up they have Zippo they are starting with nothing and so they have to do the facility design they have to design the training room they have to make sure they have uh, plumbing they have enough tables um, they have to do their triage, their red, yellow, and green. Where are they going to do this at, at their facility? Um, the types of wounds, how are you going to treat them? And then they have to do all the medical terminology. There's usually about 26 acronyms that I give them over the first semester. Those have to be included in this project. And some of them are like <coughs> crisis, protection, rest, <coughs> ice, compress, elevate, support. Simple. But there's a whole bunch of them. PMS, and it's not what you think. Yeah. <laughs> that stands for pulse motor sensation that you do before and after you splint. So those are some of the acronyms that I use very often so that they can learn those kind of things. Cool. But they also <clears throat> have to come up with their own documentation. They have to come up with an injury report form, an evaluation form, and granted, <clears throat> if they can use the internet, that's fine. I don't know why I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> but they can do that as well. Um, an injury login. Uh, we have rank one. I told him, come up with a screenshot of how we use rank one in the training room here. Every athlete signs in, they tell us their body part, they put their ID, and then we write our, our notes every single day. We average 30 to 40 students a day in that training room. So that's what they have to come up with. And then they also have to know vital signs, blood pressure, pulse, respiration, pupils. We did all of that. Skin temperature, they learned how to do all of that in the fall. Um, and then, um, what else am I forgetting? Had a former student of mine who is the Rehabilitation Center of Expertise, Quality, and Education Coordinator for OSF in Ottawa. So he is a doctorate in physical therapy. I taught him, his brother, and his sister. His sister is a traveling nurse all around the world. Um, but Greg comes in and uh, talks to the students about what he does, how he got started, and um, and if anybody wants to do job shadowing or anything like that, he offers it to them. They can go over and <coughs> walk around with him. He can show them around, give them tours. Uh, so he's a real nice um, advocate for us, uh, mm -hmm. for the students interested in going into physical therapy, uh, radiation, uh, or um, x-ray technician, those mm -hmm. kind of things. He can do all of that. And so we've got a nice uh, advocate and a, a, a nice uh, 
person that's inside the building, mm -hmm. and he's a manager. Um, hold on, not in it. Um, second semester, so the first, the first semester project's over here, if you guys want to take a look at. Second semester project, they have to take an injury from day one, from the time they got hurt. How did they get hurt? Their mechanism of injury. How severe is it? It's grade one, grade two, grade three. Did they completely tear it? Did they completely break it? Or is it just a mild sprain? And we will go through all the signs and symptoms of every single joint so that they will know the difference. So they have to pick it, then they have to do mechanism, severity, and then they have to rehab it. And they have to go from day one until that person's ready to run back on the field. They have to have all their exercises in all five phases of rehab. So it's you know a little research based because they've got to look stuff up. They have to find some information. So both first and second semester, I wanted to make sure there was a research component. Mm -hmm. You know, not just looking. They got to go into them detail, um, and that's they're going to make a presentation. Um, everybody has to do a presentation on their rehab project, and then we're always taping ankles, ankles, mm -hmm. uh, thumbs, wrists, shoulders, spicas. We're doing a whole bunch of things. Um, just don't go they, in there because they'll try to get you. I was just saying, <laughs> every time I go in there, they try to get me down and take my leg. They, yeah, they'll tell you to take your shoe and sock off. Um, but the last thing is that's really exciting is we have four student trainers now. So that's super, super exciting. We had three in the fall. We now have four. Um, so those students are in that training room every day. They're helping wipe down tables. They're filling water jugs. They're doing all the running around that uh, you know Gina or I don't have time to do. Um, and it's, it's really nice, I don't know if you guys know this, but I was one of Gina's professors in college, so that's how long I've known that young lady. Um, so we kind of reconnected when I got here, so it was another big plus for me is um, mm -hmm. you know, being able to work with her because she is amazing. I've learned so much working with her. So thank you for the opportunity to have the sports med class and the students are really enjoying it and we've got a lot that are gonna pursue that. Thank you. And we're always, continuing things. Um, we keep getting the science news grants every year that we use in our classrooms. Um, everybody has access to them, not only for biology, but for physics and chemistry. And um, a lot of us are doing a continuing education on biointeractive. Those are webinars where we learn how to uh, introduce certain topics into the classroom and they give you all kinds of um, materials that you need to teach the kids, which is really cool. I, I love those. Um, and so what you've seen is a snapshot of what we do every day up in that science department. I mean, there's a lot of things <laughs> going on. <laughs> and you like that? Yeah, I like that a lot. <laughs> you guys have any questions Thank for you. us? No. No, no questions? All right. Thank you. Now the quiz. Thank you guys Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. There is no public comment this evening. Under finance, I need a motion to approve the bills and payroll for LaSalle Pro Township High School. So moved. Second. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Merba? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Saliano? Yes. Mr. Pissetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. I need a motion to approve the bills and payroll for the LP Area Career Center. So moved. Second. Mrs. Talian? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Murba? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Pissetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. A motion to approve the payroll report? So moved. Second. Mr. Pissetto? Yes. Mr. Murba? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. I need a motion to approve the financial records as presented? So moved. Second. Mr. Murba? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Pissetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. Under correspondence, uh, we have a thank you letter from Ms. Ms. Cheryl DePape for the Board of Education's donation to the LP Educational Foundation in memory of Charles Sting Stringfellow, which is the father of Mrs. Joy Plackert, and Bernie Wilkie, the father of Mr. Bernie Wilkie. We also have a thank you card from the family of Marvin Getty for the beautiful flower, flowers in uh, memory of Mr. Marvin Getty, who is a retired science teacher and co-chair at LP. Under TIF reimbursements, we have the uh, City of Oglesby TIF for $5,109.74, and that is the total reimbursement for this month, $5,109.74. Uh, under board committees, uh, building and grounds committee, Mr. Ferrari. Uh, 
um, Building and Grounds Committee met uh, last Monday afternoon, February 12th. Um, one of the first things we discussed was the uh, status of the sports complex phase two. Uh, stainless steel countertops and ceiling tiles have been installed in the concession press box building. Uh, inspections are underway and they're uh, in the process of ordering furniture for the building. Uh, they hope to have everything ready for the upcoming season, which starts in about a month. Um, meeting uh, was scheduled for later last week uh, regarding the uh, Hubie Sarver field sign. Um, they're talking about purchasing uh, possibly one or two used golf carts for transporting guests at the uh, stadiums. Uh, there was supposed to be a meeting later last week on that uh, issue. Uh, there's a further financial analysis going ongoing regarding uh, the uh, field house. Uh, as far as the spring and summer facility projects, uh, Action item 10.1 tonight uh, has to do with the bids for the uh, counseling slash PE office renovations uh, just down the hallway here. Uh, there were two bidders, and the committee has recommended the bid for visiting construction. And as I said, that's an action item tonight. Uh, bidding on the renovations to Howard Fellow Stadium is going to begin later this month with recommendations coming in March. Um, the Kowalski supported projects um, those are ongoing. Um, different proposals are being considered. Uh, we do have an action item tonight uh, Number 10.2 uh, has to do with the uh, roll top overhead door that needs to be installed in order to get some of this equipment that it's too big to get into the doorways of <laughs> the ACC building and so they're going to have to make a special, special method to get the equipment where it needs to be. And as I said, that, that has been recommended by the Building and Grounds Committee and that's action uh, no, 10.2 tonight. There's uh, ongoing building repairs. Um, there was a, link, a, a leak involving a sprinkler head that's been repaired in the driver's ed classroom. There was a, a broken pipe in the boiler house that's been fixed and a water leak that the city of Peru took care about on the old practice mm -hmm. field behind the school. Uh, uh, HLS amendment, there was emergency uh, heating new heating put in the uh, auto shop and uh, that's an action item uh, number 10.4 on tonight's list. Uh, there's work going on regarding plaster repairs and testing regarding moisture. Uh, one of the classrooms up on the third floor is now having a problem similar to what we've had in the past over in the counseling department and so that's something that's being looked at right now. Uh, a walkthrough was done on the uh, vacant property that was recently purchased at uh, 5546 Creve Core. And uh, no asbestos was detected during testing. And uh, they're currently entertaining proposals for uh, demolition of the property. Uh, that's about it. Are there any questions? Thank you, Mr. Farr. Finance Committee, Mr. Marv. We met on Tuesday, uh, February 13th, a uh, relatively short meeting, frankly, a small list of agenda items to deal with, but we reviewed the financials. We're 58.3% of the way through the year. Um, we've received 83.83% .83 of revenue and expended 64.21% uh, of expenditures. 
And as you recall, that's normalizing. The longer we get into the fiscal year, that's normalizing because we had some uh, extraordinary items at the beginning of the fiscal year. Um, we also discussed the counseling office, PE office bid review and uh, recommended that that go on the agenda as item 10.1. Um, also discussed the driver's education car bid. The, the bids had been received, but they weren't being opened until the next day. So that's an agenda item. Uh, the bids have since been opened. Uh, we also discussed the auto shop emergency health life safety amendment. Um, which is item 10.4 and recommended that for approval. Um, we discussed the, the uh, property of 546 Creve Core <coughs> purchase and demolition updates and that we're getting quotes for demolition on that. Talked about the early childhood playground and learning lab. Um, also, and other items kind of added to the agenda, two additional things. We talked about the upcoming uh, insurance renewal and it, it, we're in the highest band for renewal, so it's probably going to be pretty expensive. But as we look at it, um, I think the way Dr. Robleski explained it is that we're kind of getting back to about the amount of premium and cost that we were before we went to this, this new insurance program. Mm -hmm. So uh, that will be forthcoming. And then the other thing that was presented to us was a, a detail of our bond bonds that are outstanding and maturities and, and just how all that works and we went through that. That was the first time that report had been presented to us. It's a new thing um, that was helpful. Helped us understand where that's all at. So that was it. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Uh, administrative reports. Uh, Superintendent's report, Dr. Bluski. Thank you, Mr. Sarver. Uh, my report is is included in your packet. The the one item uh, that I do want to uh, uh, focus on is in regards to our cell phone policy uh, work group uh, update. Uh, we had a uh, a meeting today um, that in, in which we're we're kind of we organ we're organizing the 14 members of the the committee which represent all of the departments in in the uh, in the district, um, and so uh, we're going to be uh, developing um, as I shared previously. The teams now are now tasked with creating um, surveys that's going to be utilized to collect information from students and staff, uh, parents as well as our business community. And a big part of what we want to, to examine, too, is um, to what extent are phones being utilized in a, for a curricular purpose um, currently? I think we really want to have a firm handle on what exactly is that and are there alternatives, quite frankly. You know, as we look at Chromebooks and, and uh, or maybe we could potentially look at, maybe we look at classroom sets of iPads, you know, that, that we manage um, to be able to help teachers and kids collect information. Um, but a big part of what we're, we're examining too is just it's, it's the impact, the negative impact that I think we, 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 we're experiencing not just unique to LP High School, but it's, it's quite frankly, it's across the country, it's across the world, quite frankly. Um, and, and so the ultimate outcome is by the May board meeting, um, we will have recommendations. We're exploring our current cell phone policy, which in summary says that cell phones need to be during the school day, uh, during class time, away, um, unless the teacher may has, makes a determination that they can be utilized. Um, they are allowed during passing periods and during lunchtime. And so part of our study is also looking at the number of referrals that are, that are issued as a result of cell phone infractions. We're also then looking at issues of um, uh, videotaping, audio taping, you know, what are some of the challenges um, with that. Um, and then we're going to be reaching out to our parents as well and be in, one we want to be able to get a sense of what's their perceptions of their kids' use uh, of, of cell phones as, as well as trying to see is there, is there a connection to there, is there a potential disconnect uh, to that as well. And at the end of the day, we just want to have an environment where we are ensuring we're doing everything we can to remove all distractions um, from the learning process. And part of those distractions are is, 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 is assessing what impact are cell phones having in terms of, number one, distracting the academic process. What impact are they having in terms of the social emotional uh, needs uh, of, of kids or just their well-being, quite frankly. 
And uh, I don't think there's any surprise either when we talk about issues of bullying, you know, and what impact is that having um, as well, you know, in, in the use of, uh, of electronic devices. Um, so it's, it's a very engaging topic. Uh, I think our staff is very dialed in on, uh, sure and they're there. looking forward and they appreciate, uh, I think, the, the opportunity to be able to, to um, express their voices and their opinions and their recommendations uh, on this. And, and I think it's going to be good for our entire community to have this conversation. Good. Are there any questions about that? This might not be relevant. I, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. But is there any instances where uh, multi-factor authentication to a cell phone is needed by a student? I'm not aware of anything that we're doing right now. So there's nothing where they, they get a message and they have to click on that to get into a program? Or not, nothing that would be district-based. Now, there there. I guess on their Chromebooks, though, they have the emails, and so there'd be, I guess we have to ver verify that. I've not been made aware mm -hmm. of, of that being an issue, but I'll bring that up with uh, Mrs. Williams. It's just a question because, yeah. I mean, that is a... It's a that's a real issue. It's a real issue, <laughs> yeah. and I mean, in my employment, it's everything now. So I, I'm i paying for, you yeah. know, because my, my employees have to have the cell phone in order to get access Yeah. To yeah. Some information. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. just a question. Well, I mean, methods. Right. No, I agree. Well, you know, it's been interesting too. You, even at our conversation today, you know, it's because we talked about the, what are the positives and negatives, mm -hmm. and okay, you know, some of our instructors. I'll I'll I'll, I'll focus on our PE department. Um, like so, when they're in the when they're in the cardio room, right? I mean, part of part of the 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 motivation for kids, like when you're at the gym, right? You, you put your headphones on and you're either listening to a podcast or music and whatnot. That's all part of the process, too. And you know, I know our band program, they have an app that's on the phone that's tied in with all their, the dots, you know, to make sure they're hitting the steps right. So these are going to be some of the things that we want to have a full understanding of where is it being used, you know, and, you know, what would be the implications if there was a recommendation that had a, maybe a more stringent expectation right. for that? So there'd be, it's going to be a lot of good, good, good things for us to study. So, so they're not going away? To, uh, to be determined. No, I mean, to, right now we, we, are, we are simply in the exploratory phase right now of truly kind of trying a full understanding of how are they being used so we don't miss anything um, and ultimately making a recommendation for how to... Um, Move forward. Move forward. Mm -hmm. Any other questions regarding that? Yep. The only other thing then is we had a uh, FOIA request uh, from this past month from Smart Procure. Uh, this is an annual request that we receive for a listing of the certified staff's um, contact information, first name, last name, their title, department, the school phone number and, and address, email address, not home address, but the office address, and we complied uh, with that request. Request. Okay. Are there any questions? All right. Thank you. Uh, principal's report, athletic director's report, and area career center report are in your packets. If you have any questions, um, read those over, and at a later date we'll go over those. Uh, director of communications, Mr. Baker. Right, good evening. I'll try to keep it quick for everybody. Um, really, uh, you, you've got uh, my, my report summary. Probably the big one just to pull out is um, musicals just coming up. We're just a few weeks away, um, at least less than a month. Uh, just wait. Mrs. Rookie's finalizing a few details, and we'll get uh, ticket sales online uh, to the public. Um, and as always, board members and our faculty and staff always get a couple of compl complimentary tickets. So please, uh, as soon as we have those available, let us know uh, what your plans are. Um, other than that, uh, the foundation, um, as you heard about, doing good things, uh, like those microscopes for the science department. Um, so a good opportunity to help them out is coming up on April 20th. It's the annual trivia night. And then um, after a year or so off, uh, we're bringing back the High Five campaign, as which is a slightly larger alumni mailing that uh, we'll send out asking for just a $5 High Five to get those uh, alumni who haven't donated in, in the past two years to maybe uh, reconsider and, and give a little uh, little bit of uh, financial support back to the district. Mm -hmm. um, but that's all, unless you have any questions. No. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and a new business. I need a motion of approval to award visiting construction, the bid for the counseling office and P office renovation, the counseling office bid, base bid, 
$358,452, and the PE office alternate bid won $244,900 for a total of $603,352. So moved. Second. Mr. Pizzetto? Yes. Mrs. Taliano? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Murbud? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. Any emotional approval to award Leapart Construction Incorporated the contract for the ACC Wing New Rolling Fire Door Project, $34,000. So moved. Second. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Murba? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Pizzetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. A emotional approval to award Shimmer for the purchase of the 2023 Hyundai Sonata SE with a trade-in for $25,618.03. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Murpa? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. A motion of approval <coughs> of the Emergency Health Life Safety Amendment Resolution <coughs> replacing the auto shop furnace. So, so moved. moved. Second. Mr. Murpa? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. A motion of <coughs> approval of the spring 2024 intergovernmental agreement with the City of LaSalle on the usage of Rotary Park baseball field. So moved. Second. Mr. Murba? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. A motion of approval to authorize the superintendent to create a half-time counseling, counselor position for the 2024-2025 school year. So moved. Second. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Murba? Yes. And Mr. Sarver? Yes. A motion of approval for the following FMLA request. Uh, Ms. Alyssa Beasley, effective March 26, 2024, returning on or around May 14, 2024. Tell second. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go first. All right. <laughs> Yes. Mr. Murba. Yes. Mr. Ferrari. Yes. Dr. Lynch. Yes. Mr. Pacetto. Yes. Mr. Sarver. Yes. A motion of approval of the following uh, appointments as presented. So moved. Second. Mr. Murba. Yes. Mrs. Talian. Yes. Mr. Ferrari. Yes. Dr. Lynch. Yes. Mr. Pacetto. Yes. Mr. Sarver. Yes. A motion of approval of the varsity baseball team trip to Knoxville, Tennessee over spring break to participate in the ETCBA invite. From April 2nd, 2024 to April 6, 2024. Expenses will be funded by the Booster Club and Camp Activity Account. So moved. Second. Uh, Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yep. Mr. Murba? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. The emotional approval of the tennis boys tennis team overnight trip to Bloomington, Illinois from May 3rd, 2024 to May 4th, 2024 to participate in the UHI invite. Expenses will be funded by the Booster Club. So moved. Second. Mr. Murba? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. A motion of approval for the ACC Automotive Program to host our annual car show at the Pope Building on September 22nd, 2024. So moved. Second. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Murba? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. A motion of approval of the Mock Trial Club Overnight Trip to Springfield, Illinois to participate in the Illinois State Bar Association's High School Mock Trial Invitational at the University of Illinois Springfield from March 16th, 2024 to March 17th, 2024. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Murbeck? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. I have a motion to go into executive closed session for the purpose of A, discussion of the minutes and meetings lawfully closed under the Open Meeting Act, whether for the purpose of approval by the body of the minutes or the semi-annual review of the minutes. B, appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees. C, collective negotiation matters between the public body and its employees or the representatives or deliberation concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees. <coughs> and D, imminent pending litigation with open session of possible action items to follow. So moved. Second. Mr. Pizzetto? Yes. Mr. Murbeck? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes.